Hello world, I'm Benjamin and this is Source Decoded. We need to talk about something that's kind of important and um, maybe we should have talked about it before, but we didn't and there's no sense in getting really angry about that because you can't change the past. But the truth is, um, I may have left you in a state of confusion and angst and, and if that's the case, I'm sorry. The only thing I can do is apologize and try and correct that error, and, and that's what I'm going to try and do now. Okay, here we go. Scope. We need to talk about scope. Scope is the nerd word for the place in a program where an identifier is valid. And an identifier is, is a name that we give to something. We've given names to lots of things like variables and constants and functions. Those names are identifiers. And a scope is a region of the program where that identifier points to the thing that you pointed it at. Humans have identifiers too. Um, as a matter of tradition and probably convenience, when a new human comes into the world, we give it a name. And that's really handy for when that human is in the other room being really quiet, the parent can use the name to get the little human's attention and try and figure out what it's doing in there because it's really suspicious that it's being so quiet. So you are a human, probably, and you have a name, I hope. But is your name unique to you? My name is Benjamin. And I had an elementary school class in which there were three kids named Benjamin. And as you might imagine, that can cause confusion. So in our class, we had to come up with new identifiers for at least two of the three Benjamins. Because it just wouldn't do for when the teacher, for example, said, Benjamin is my favorite student, it wouldn't do to have any confusion that she was talking about me. Programs similarly can't afford to have this confusion. In fact, they're way less tolerant about it than we are. In a program, we might have to identify hundreds or thousands of things, and if we could never reuse names for things, then the names that we used would end up getting really, really long and really hard to remember. And this is why scope was invented. A scope is like a box inside which all of the names point to values. And that box prevents these names from leaking out into other parts of the program. So let's look at some examples. The easiest way to define a scope in JavaScript is to use a block statement, which we introduced a couple videos ago. And here I've got two block statements and they each create a scope. And because there are two scopes, I can reuse the name teacher name. So up here in this block, the teacher's name is Mrs. Happy. There are 23 students and her favorite student is, of course, me. And then in this other scope, which might be a different classroom in the building, the teacher's name is Mr. Smart. He has 30 students and I don't care who the favorite student is because it's not my class. Now in practice, we never really see block statements like this hanging out by themselves just to create scope. I mean, it's totally legal but there just doesn't seem to be a lot of call for it. What we do see a lot, however, is these blocks associated with conditionals or loops, such as in this example. Here we have an if statement and some else's, and they have some blocks associated with them. Here we're reusing the identifier school name three times, but because it, each of them is inside of its own block in its own scope, that's totally legal. But since the scopes keep the names from leaking out, it means when we try to console log the school name, we get an error saying school name is not defined because by the time the program gets here, there is no such thing as school name. It is out of scope. I said that scope was like a box and it is, but it's like a box that you can put inside of other boxes. And when you put one scope inside of another scope, the inner scope inherits the identifiers from the outer scope. Every JavaScript file comes with a scope that is the outside of the file. So in this case, grade belongs to the outermost scope. If we want to use this if statement to figure out what the school name is, we can do that by lifting school name into the higher scope, like this. I will just declare with let 
school name and I won't assign it anything. And then I can assign values to that whenever I want. Now when we console log the name of the school, we get Nerdstown High. That's an example of lifting scope. Now, what happens when you have an outer scope and an inner scope, and the inner scope declares an identifier that's already been declared in the outer scope? Will JavaScript throw an error? No, it will not. Here's another example, and we have two scopes going on. Technically three, because the file defines its own scope, but we have two blocks in here, and in this outer block, we define favorite student as who else but me. And then in the inner scope, we define favorite student again. And you'll notice that JavaScript is not complaining. This is legal. What happens is that the identifier in the inner scope wins. So let's console log some things. And see what favorite student is at a couple of parts in the program. So here, favorite student is Benjamin, as we expect. And here, favorite student is going to be Jonathan. Now, because I've declared favorite student here, it means I don't have access to this favorite student from the outer one. Favorite student will always be Jonathan. And it looks like I need to have a talk with Jonathan on the playground at recess. I'm going to give you some rules about scope to remember. Rule number one is that an identifier is available only inside of its own scope and nested scopes. Rule number two is when an identifier is declared in two scopes, the inner scope trumps the outer one. And that's all the rules. That's about all you need to remember about scope, and you'll be good. But besides blocks, there is another way to define scopes. Here we have an example with some functions. And one of the cool features of functions is that they, too, define their own scopes. Now we have two functions. They each use their own const rocket and spacecraft and vehicle. So if we are going to the moon, we can use the Saturn V rocket and the Apollo spacecraft. And we can hand those off to the vehicle assembly building, which will prepare them for launch on the launch pad. If we're going to the space station, on the other hand, we'll use the Falcon 9 and a Crew Dragon. Something cool about the scopes of functions is that functions carry their scope around with them. In fact, the scope of a function has a special name. It's called a closure. And that can be really useful. Let's look at that. You might remember in the last video when we were talking about first class functions, we had an example of a function that received a parameter and then returned a function. And it looked kind of like this. We have the get adder function, which receives left side, which is going to be a number, and it returns a function. When we call get adder, the value that we hand to left side is going to be bound to the function that it returned. So that's why left side is usable inside the returned functions. So we call get adder with two. Two goes to left side, and then this function is returned. Now it doesn't matter that we call get adder with four later because this function that got returned last time is still bound to the parameter of the outer function. So we can have add two and add four. That means you can use JavaScript functions to create dynamic scopes, scopes that you make on the fly and use to carry data around. Man, these JavaScript functions just keep getting cooler. So now you know how a scope works, but I feel like I should give you some advice. Never scope something larger than where you're actually going to use it. And prefer passing values around in function parameters over lifting values to higher scope. At some point, you're going to be tempted to lift everything clear to the outside and say, scoping is hard, I just don't want to think about it anymore. Well, we have a name for things that are scoped all the way to the outside. We call them global values because they exist in the global scope or the scope that is available globally. And 98% of the time, global values are bad news. And they're bad news because they end up increasing your cognitive load. It's something that you initially do out of laziness because you don't want to have to think about where something should be properly scoped. But then because it's available globally, you forget where it's being used. And that makes bugs where some part of your program changes a value that was used somewhere else in the program and you can't figure out where it was changed and you're confused and you spend a lot of time debugging and then you don't like programming and then you'll stop watching my videos and then I won't get the validation that I need from YouTube that the stuff that I am making is useful and important and I will be sad.
So globals, 98% of the time, are bad. They do exist, and there is actually a use for them sometimes, but in the code that you're going to be writing, you should probably avoid them. And don't try and justify to yourself that you are in the 2% and this is the case where it's actually going to be okay. Don't do things that make your life harder. It's a bad habit to start, so just, just don't. Just don't. Now that is just about all you need to know about scopes, and I'm feeling better already that we talked about this, but there is still one more thing that we need to address, and that is the keyword var. When we talked about variables and constants, I told you that var existed, that it was originally the way that we declared variables in JavaScript, but that you should probably avoid it. Now I'm going to tell you about why. We had an example that involves some if statements. Let's go back to that example but just a little bit modified to use var instead of let. Now we have some if statements, and if grade is less than or equal to five, we have a block, var, school name, and then again, block with a var and a school name. And we get to the bottom and we console log out school name, but hang on, school name should be out of scope because it's inside of these blocks. How are we allowed to console log school name? Do identifiers declared with var just ignore scoping rules altogether? No, they don't, because that would be complete anarchy. But they do follow different scoping rules. You see, there are different ways to make a scoping system. The most common is using block scope, and that's the one that we've been talking about. But when JavaScript was first created, for whatever reason, Mr. Ike decided to use a different method he used what's called lexical scoping. And with lexical scoping, the scope inside of a program isn't created by blocks, it's created by functions. So to make a new scope, you had to make a new function. This is nerdy and actually maybe kind of cool, but it confused a lot of people because it's block scoping that most people expect. So people would come in to JavaScript coming from Java or C or something else and expect it to work one way, but it really worked a different way and they would end up redeclaring variables in a scope where that identifier was already used and that would cause bugs and problems and it made people confused. And it didn't help very much that when you use var and you redeclare an identifier with var, JavaScript won't yell at you or give you any clue that you've redeclared something. Const and let, on the other hand, will yell at you and they'll prevent you from redeclaring something that already exists in that scope. So JavaScript was amended to include let and const, which follow block scoping rules, and now people are less confused. Now, off the top of my head, I really can't think of any reasons where I would want lexical scoping over block scoping. Uh, the block scoping works pretty naturally and it does whatever I need it to do. But, you know, I'm saying this on the internet, so what else is the internet good for but to tell you when you're wrong? I fully expect somebody in the comment to point out an obvious situation that I've missed. Please do so we can all get smarter and I won't even be very much offended. <sighs> Now we have talked about scope. Do you think you could forgive me? That's all for now. You'll see me in the next one.